Washington, this is VOA News. I'm Ray Kugel reporting. Jordan's king promises harsh response against Islamic State militants. Jordan's King Abdullah is vowing to take tough action against IS militants following the group's gruesome killing of a Jordanian pilot captured after his plane went down during a mission targeting the militants in Syria. The murder of pilot Mawad al qasesbe prompted Jordanian authorities to execute two Iraqi prisoners. The death of the Jordanian pilot appears to be galvanizing Arab public opinion against Islamic State. Edward Uranian reports. Jordanians mourn the death of pilot Moaz Kasaspa in mosques across the country Wednesday amid widespread sorrow and indignation. Safi Kasaspa, father of the victim, told journalists and others gathered to pay their condolences that Wednesday's execution of two Islamic militants, Sajida Rishawi and Ziad Karboli, is not enough, and he urges the Jordanian government to exact a heavy price on the brutal and criminal Islamic State group, which he says sullies the true nature of Islam. Edward Uranian, Cairo. Rescue workers in Taiwan have used a crane to lift part of the wreckage of a passenger plane that crashed outside of Taipei, killing at least 26 people and leaving about 20 others missing in shallow water. The Transasia Airways jet clipped a bridge and plunged into the Keelung River shortly after takeoff Wednesday. Rescuers and boats surrounded the partially submerged upside-down plane and pulled at least 15 of the passengers to safety, including a young child. It's not known what caused the crash. It did happen during relatively clear weather. It crashed just after taking off from Taipei's downtown Sungjian Airport on its way to the outlying islands of Kinmen. This is VOA News. Nigerian militant group Boko Haram is reported to have killed dozens of people in a cross-border raid in Cameroon. A newspaper in Cameroon's far north region says Boko Haram fighters attacked the town of Fotokol on Wednesday and conducted what they call a massacre. A resident of the town tells VOA the militants entered mosques and cut the throats of Muslims who had gathered for early morning prayers. The eyewitness says Cameroonian soldiers, backed by forces from Chad, eventually repelled the attack, killing an unknown number of militants. The number of reported Ebola cases went up for the first time this year in the three West African countries where transmission is still active. The World Health Organization says 124 new cases were reported in the week ending February 1st, with a high of 80 new cases in Sierra Leone, followed by 39 in Guinea, and 5 in Liberia. The WHO says there is an urgent need to end the outbreak before the wet season begins and access to the remote areas becomes more difficult. An Egyptian court sentenced 230 activists, including top liberal campaigner Ahmed Duma, to life in prison Wednesday for taking part in clashes during the country's 2011 uprising against ousted President Hosni Mubarak. Thirty other defendants, all minors, were given 10-year sentences. A key Obama administration nominee voiced tentative support Wednesday for supplying lethal aid to Ukraine in its battle against pro-Russian separatists. U.S. Defense Secretary nominee Ashton Carter told a Senate panel he favors supplying arms to Ukraine, despite opposition to such a move from allies France and Germany. But Mr. Carter later told the same panel that economic and political pressure on Moscow should remain the centerpiece of Western efforts to stop Kremlin aid to rebel forces. Three of the ten worst cities in the world for traffic congestion are in Southeast Asia. Bangkok is number eight on the list, where Steve Herman reports. It is a common refrain among drivers in Asia's big cities to lament they are stuck in the world's most awful traffic. However, unless one is in Jakarta staring at the unmoving vehicle in front, it could be worse. An analysis based on satellite navigation data contributed by motorists in 78 cities around the world using TomTom GPS devices puts the Indonesian capital just slightly ahead of Istanbul for total stop and starts. Mexico City, Surabaya, and St. Petersburg, Russia are next in the long line. Rounding out the top ten in the Magnatech Stop-Start Index are Moscow, Rome, Bangkok, Guadalajara, and Buenos Aires. Steve Herman, VOA News, Bangkok. And I'm Ray Kugel in Washington. That's the latest world news from VOA.